Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Our opening song is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who misled and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them, and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint the shepherds for them who will shepherd them, so that they need no longer fear and tremble 
and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of an enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. I was blessed to have two wonderful Irish Catholic grandmothers. Each one, in their own way, played the role of shepherd in my life, teaching me what it meant to be family, how to provide for family, and most of all, how to practice and appreciate my Catholic faith. I remember fondly the wonderful Sunday dinners with family gathered around a dinner table and faith at the focus of our attention. My parents further played the role of shepherds in my life, getting me enrolled here in religious education, bringing me to Mass, and attending Mass with me. It was through their instruction, example, and guidance that I was shepherded into the graces of the Catholic Church. Then, during the darkest hours of my faith, when I went astray from the church, it was the shepherding of a pastor here at St. Michael's who took time from his busy schedule to come to my home and guide me back into the church and into the arms of our Lord. Once here, to the wonderful example, guidance, and shepherding from many of you that I was able to hear, understand, and accept my calling into holy orders as a permanent deacon in the Diocese of Erie. Were it not for those shepherds, I most likely would not be standing in front of all of you here today. Still, the truth be told, Many of us have had similar experiences in the development of our own faith. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. These are amazing words. It literally means with the Lord as our shepherd, none of us shall want anything. In today's gospel, Jesus said his heart felt pity on the crowd for they were like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep need the shepherd to take them to green pasture where there's plenty of food, protect them from things that wish to do them harm and show them the way to lead them to safety and salvation, to give them life. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd just as Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd, brothers and sisters, each and every one of us make up the body of Christ. It is through each of us that Jesus Christ continues his ministry of the Good Shepherd. In his homily during a communion mass, 
The Holy Father, Pope Francis, spoke of the Good Shepherd. He quoted our Lord, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me, and I give them fullness of life. The Holy Father went on to say, Jesus is still at work being the Good Shepherd, nurturing and giving life. But how does he do it now? Through you and you and me and all of us. That's how Jesus Christ is nurturing our human family so that it becomes transformed. But each of us has to take the responsibility to carry the work of Jesus, to be that good shepherd who knows others, loves them, draws them to life. We are the body of Christ. We must carry on the ministry of Jesus Christ. We must follow the lead of the good shepherd. Like my Irish Catholic grandmothers, generations before us have understood this role that shepherding plays in the development of our Catholic faith. Shepherds teach, protect, they nurture, they guide the sheep that have gone astray back into the fold. So let us ask ourselves, how do we measure up with those members of the great body of Christ who have gone on before us? Have we all done our part to evangelize and bring stray feet, sheep back into the fold? Have we brought the unbaptized to the body of Christ? Have we helped young men and young women discern holy orders, consecrated life, holy family life, holy single life? Today, in the United States, there are over 80 million men and women who declare themselves as Roman Catholics. Yet there are only 37,500 Roman Catholic priests ordained in the entire United States. In our own diocese, we've seen the closing and merging of many of our parishes these past years. Some of it's because of demographics that are changing, but most of it is because we're losing parishioners. Parishioners who've gone astray and need shepherding. Church attendance has dropped drastically these last few years. Many pews are vacant. The celebration of Holy Mass where once several hundred have attended are now occupied by a few. Nonetheless, people are hungry to learn about Jesus Christ. Young people want to hear truth, and they have questions. Just like the crowd in today's gospel, most want to know what Jesus is teaching. The obligation to bring young people into the church doesn't fall on our bishop and priests as much as it does to all of us, the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are the body of Christ, the Good Shepherd, and we have a great deal of work to do. We are the body of Christ. It is up to each of us to provide the worship, keep the sacraments, to evangelize, and live the Beatitudes. It's up to each and every one of us to fulfill the role of the Good Shepherd here on earth. It's up to each and every one of us to bring the fullness of life to all of humanity, the same fullness of life that the Holy Father speaks of. St. Paul reminds us when he says, Jesus Christ established peace by reconciling one body with God through the cross. Today, we are the body of Christ. 
Jesus calls on each and every one of us to be the Good Shepherd. It's our obligation to carry out the work of Jesus. Like my Irish Catholic grandmothers before us, we all need to be the shepherd. We need to bring our stray sheep back into the fold. I remind us all of the words of our Holy Father. Each of us has to take the responsibility to carry on the work of Jesus, to be that good shepherd who knows others, loves them, and draws them into life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on a third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ goes out to his flock on earth. In the name of that Good Shepherd, let us ask our Heavenly Father to fulfill our special needs. That the shepherds of the church will proclaim Christ, admonishing and teaching with all wisdom, we pray to the Lord. for an end to terrorism in the world, and for peaceful resolution to all conflicts between nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the spiritual growth of our parish community, that we will commit ourselves to the truth of the gospel with zeal, self-sacrifice, and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the grace to set aside time to be with the Lord in silence and prayer, and to find rest in the heart of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military, and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, we pray to the Lord. that the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Paul Selnikovic, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Elena McDonald, Trudy Lung Young, Charles McElane, who died this past week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions.
We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people gathered at the banquet you have prepared and ready to offer the sacrifice of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. 
to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord, the gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial of his wonders. He gives food to those who fear him.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Please be seated. to read a letter to you from Bishop Persico, so please listen very carefully. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as you have heard, the Catholic bishops of Pennsylvania have issued statements indicating that the dispensation from the obligation to attend Mass, which went into effect in March of 2020, just as the pandemic began significantly impacting all facets of life in the United States, will soon be lifted. I am reinstating the obligation to attend Mass in person on Sundays and Holy Days in the Diocese of Erie beginning on Sunday, August 15, 2021, the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. As always, the obligation does not apply to those with serious illness or health risks as well as their caregivers. For most of us, the thought of a global pandemic impacting nearly every aspect of our lives had never crossed our minds. As I said in my letter to you in March of 2020, given the challenges brought by the COVID-19 pandemic, I made the best decisions I could for the good of the community, especially the most vulnerable among us. I am deeply grateful to the clergy in our diocese who did everything they could to respond to the challenges. Many use technology to include parishioners in live stream masses, prayer services, and events. Others were creative in their efforts to remain in touch, ensuring you of their prayers and support. Still others were called upon in these extraordinary circumstances to be present to COVID patients and their families. I also want to extend my thanks to each of you People in every stage of life were faced with significant sacrifices from children attending school remotely and adults navigating unexpected challenges to young adults rethinking social interactions and postponing important plans. All the while, our elderly par parishioners faced a time of deep isolation. My heart is especially with those of you whose livelihoods were disrupted and those who those of you who lost loved ones during the pandemic. I know your pain was increased as a result of the many restrictions we had to endure. St. Paul tells us we are to rejoice in the Lord always. While I will not minimize the pain and difficulties we have faced and will continue to face in new ways, I encourage you to reflect on what he says in his letter to the Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God which is surpassed, that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Many of you have begun returning to Sunday Mass, and I am hearing from pastors that there is a sense of renewal and of deepened appreciation for the Holy Eucharist and for your parish communities. It is my hope and prayer we all, we all will continue to grow in our faith and live in the peace God promises. Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the Americas, pray for us. St. Patrick, patron of the Diocese of Erie, Pray for us. 
Sincerely yours in Christ, Lawrence T. Persico, the Bishop of Erie. So you heard it, they're his words. The dispensation will be lifted on uh, Sunday, August 15th. Have a blessed week, everyone.